Hello, scientists. Have you ever wondered what makes sourdough bread taste, well, sour? The trick is a process called fermentation. When making sourdough bread, bakers use a special ingredient called a sourdough starter. A starter provides a home to tiny but helpful microorganisms, including a type of fungus called yeast, and a type of probiotic, or good bacteria, called lactobacilli. These two types of microorganisms are not harmful to humans, and they help with the fermentation process by eating up sugar molecules found in one of a starter's main ingredients, flour. After eating this sugar, the bacteria produce a type of acid called lactic acid, which gives sourdough its distinct tangy flavor. The yeast also helps with bread making by producing a gas called carbon dioxide. This gas gets trapped in bread dough, which allows it to rise and creates the fluffy holes found in sourdough bread after baking. This process uses up all the sugar found in the flour that was originally added. But a baker can continue to care for their starter and keep it growing by feeding the yeast and bacteria, which keeps the fermentation process going. Some starters have even been kept going for over 100 years. You can make your own sourdough starter with just two ingredients, water and flour. You'll also need a few basic materials. A glass or ceramic container, like a large mason jar. Something to cover your container, like a paper towel, plastic wrap, or a thin cloth. A large rubber band that can help secure your cover over your container. A spoon or fork for mixing. Something to measure with, like a kitchen scale or a measuring cup. An optional piece of tape to track how your starter grows. Finally, don't forget your science notebook and something to write with. Now, you might be wondering, but what about the yeast and bacteria? Well, you won't need to add either of those microorganisms yourself. Instead, wild yeast and lactobacilli that are found naturally all around in things like the air and on your skin will get added to your starter when you mix your flour and water. So to get your starter started, you'll just need to create a flour and water mixture using a ratio of one part water to one equal part flour. Once your starter is mixed, it will continue to grow over the next few days as the yeast creates big bubbles of carbon dioxide. So make sure to leave plenty of room in your container at the beginning. I'm measuring out 38 milliliters of lukewarm water and pouring it into my container. And then I'll add 38 milliliters of flour or about a quarter of a cup. Record how much flour and water you decide to use in your science notebook. Mix the ingredients until you have a thin batter. If you'd like, you can mark how high your starter is using a piece of tape. Next, Cover your container. If you prefer to use a lid that came with your container, avoid securing it too tight. Instead, simply rest the lid on top. This will allow the carbon dioxide produced by the yeast to escape the container without building up too much pressure. Now it's time to let the fermentation process work. Leave your starter out in a warm spot like a kitchen counter for about 24 hours. After this time, make some observations about what you notice happening to your starter. Record these observations in your science notebook. This is also a good time to feed your starter, which will add more sugar and keep the fermentation process going. To feed your starter, you'll need more flour and warm water. First, make room in your container by removing about half a cup or four ounces of your existing starter. Since I just made mine, I'm not going to remove any right now. Then add a quarter cup or about two ounces of warm water. And add a half cup or two ounces of fresh flour into your starter's container. Mix the new ingredients until you're back to a thin but sticky batter consistency. Continue to feed and grow your starter twice a day for about a week and then it'll be ready for you to use in some recipes. You can also experiment with how much you need to feed your starter by changing the temperature of where you store it. 
For example, storing your starter in a cold location like a fridge will slow down the fermentation process, and you'll only need to feed it about once a week. Keeping your starter in a hotter place will speed up the fermentation process, meaning you'll need to feed it more often, about once every one to two days. As you experiment, be sure to record your observations in your science notebook. Many things, such as humidity, elevation, different sources of water, and different types of flour can all play a role in affecting how your starter grows. So have fun experimenting with the fermentation process as you learn what's needed to keep your unique sourdough starter happy and thriving. And for more exciting ways to continue learning, check out Paxi.org. Thank you, and stay curious.